Democrats this morning are gearing up for the last day of their convention. In his speech last night, President Obama said Donald Trump will not win the White House with a campaign based on fear. He's selling the American people short. We're not a fragile people. We're not a frightful people. Our power doesn't come from some self-declared savior promising that he alone can restore order as long as we do things his way. We don't look to be ruled. Dan Pfeiffer and John Favreau know President Obama's message as well. Dan is a former senior advisor to the president. John served as his director of speech writing. He helped with the president's address last night. Together, they now host a podcast called Keeping It 1600. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, guys. It's a good title 16, for a podcast. Well, yeah, 1600 is a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I call it Keeping It 1600. John, the president brought you back to help on this speech tonight. What goes into the construction of this speech? What what was the, what were you trying to convey? I mean, I think uh, a couple weeks ago, I know he met with Cody Keenan. They both sort of drafted most of the speech together. And, you know, he had three things he wanted to do. He wanted to, you know, make sure that he showed his support for Hillary Clinton and talk about what it was like working with her, what it was like personally knowing her, why she's ready to be commander in chief. And then, you know, he also wanted to take on Trumpism, more than just Trump, but sort of Trump's whole philosophy. And, um, and also the speech was a bookend to 2004, his first convention speech which was all about patriotism and American values and um, basically, you know, everything in that 2004 speech, you know, Donald Trump doesn't represent. In the past, he has not mentioned Donald Trump. Whenever he's speaking, he has not mentioned yeah. it by name and even saying, I see no need to. But last night he did. But what was the thinking behind that? I think it was just the more you start saying, like, the other opponent, the other guy, like, everyone knows who you're it talking about. Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might as well just say it. What did you fine. say? It gets awkward. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, Dan, let's assume, let's assume for a moment you had a communications for Hillary Clinton. What do you have to do tonight? Because you've seen a big night last night and even a big night with Michelle Obama before that. What do you have to I do? I think the main... What's the test? I think Hillary Clinton's audience tonight is undecided voters. But it's not voters who are undecided about who to vote for. It's people who are undecided whether to vote. Yeah. You need, she needs people to be as fired up for her as, she, as they were for Barack Obama to stand in line for hours on election day or in early vote stations to vote. And because at the end of the day, the math is very simple for a Democrat. If zero people who voted for Mitt Romney vote for Hillary Clinton, but most people who voted for Barack Obama do, she still wins a large election. So it's about raising the stakes to give people a reason to go vote. Because it's he fair. won 53 to 47 yeah, right, percent against right. Mitt Romney. Yeah. It's fair to say only she can do that. All these other people can't do they, that for They her. can help, but she has to close the deal. Let me ask you, John, though, too, I mean, what, some of the phrasing in there. I mean, <clears throat> this was about when he said, that Donald Trump is a homegrown demagogue and placed him in the same sentence as fascists, communists, and jihadists. There must have been a debate about that line. No, that was just his line. <laughs> <laughs> he that just added that line, line to the speech, and that was so, that. So if it's his line, there's no debate. There's, there's no, no debate. debate. There's no debate. Yeah, Dan, what do you think the, le legacy, the legacy he wants to leave, and how much is it about stumping for Hillary Clinton to continue that legacy? I thought one of the most interesting things about this speech last night is this is his last yeah. major speech. Right. He could have spent, he was on stage for 44 minutes, he could have spent 20 minutes talking about himself, going through all of his accomplishments, but instead he sp spent just the opening of the speech talking about what he accomplished and spent the rest of it stumping for Hillary Clinton and against Donald Trump. And the reason for that is to actually cement his legacy, it's critically important for Hillary Clinton to win. Is he raring to go because he has a special animus about Trump because he thinks there are two American views and he doesn't and he's repelled by Trump's view? It's not personal about Trump. A lot of people ask that question because he raised the birth certificate. It's not that. He's got a thick skin. People have said horrible things about him. He, he is deeply disturbed by Trump's vision of America. And the thing that I've always seen with the president is what makes him the most mad is when someone in a position of power kicks down at those who aren't in power. So whether it's Muslims, immigrants, women, when he sees that, he takes it upon himself to go out there and fight for them. And I think that's why he's, you, you can feel the passion in what he has said about Trump's views and how he's framed this election. And we certainly for, felt his passion too last night. I was wondering how much of it was influenced by Michelle Obama. There were reports <laughs> that he was up at three o'clock re-editing and, and she three tweeted, a. M. 3 a.m. Yeah. She tweeted this, that's my man, your truth, dignity and grace reminds us what real leadership looks like. I am always proud of our POTUS. Do you think there's competition between the two? You guys know the both. You guys know yeah, the both I'm gonna very weigh well. Yeah, I'm going to on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, no. She, she raised the bar. He knew, he knew that she raised the bar for sure. <laughs> To write for him, what is his skill as an orator? 
I think his, his skill is storytelling and not just like individual anecdotes, but <laughs> every speech from beginning to end tells a story. It's not a collection of applause lines. And it's what was the story last night? So it was, a, it was a story about America, what American values really are, how you really define patriotism, you know, what it means to be an American. He does and, good aspiration, doesn't he? He does good aspiration. And Dan, the <laughs> other paragraph too, Gail and I were talking about this, nobody else did this, um, we didn't think, talked about what we didn't see in Cleveland last night. He yeah. said what we saw wasn't particularly Republican yeah. and it sure wasn't conservative. It was a deeply pessimistic vision for the country. I know you because I covered the White House in terms of messaging a convention. It was a stark contrast between these two conventions. It absolutely was. The, I thought what was interesting in the paragraph we're talking about is the president made a very specific outreach to those Republicans, those conservatives who are very uncomfortable with Trump, but have Kane did that too. Right, but are, have not yet decided that they're going to prepare. They may write someone in or stay home and try to get, create a permission structure for them to uh, come forward and, and support Hillary because Donald Trump doesn't have the right temperament and experience to be president. Uh, turnout is a huge issue in this election, A, because of the relative unpopularity of both candidates going in. Right. Absolutely. This is, if if we have turnout similar to 2012, Hillary Clinton will win this election. She will win by a larger margin than Barack Obama. If we don't, Donald Trump can be president. All comes down to who, to who votes and when. Congratulations on keeping it real, 1600. <laughs> we can talk to you guys for half an really hour. Right. John thank and Dan, you. thank you. And Dan may offer my congratulations to your upcoming marriage. Thank you. We've got excellent And John's, too. Oh, oh, John. oh an announcement. Oh, well, I just saw his fiance backstage. Yeah. Hopefully, yours is as nice as she is. Great to have you guys. She's terrific.